Today's episode of Variant is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Variant, I put Ant-Man up against the Atom. Welcome to Variant. We love comics more than I'm sure every kid is sad that summer is over. I'm your host, Eris Quinones. Before I talk about today's episode, I just wanted to let you guys know that I'll be doing a meet and greet at the Lost Toys in Dallas, Texas on October 3rd from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. I might be there a little longer, but I'll for sure be there from 1 to 4. The DFW Ghostbusters will be there. A cosplayer, Crystal Star, is going to judge a cosplay contest with a big grand prize. A margarita machine will be there. They have a geek game show with trivia and more. And they have an amazing selection of vintage and current toys. I put the address and all the info in the description below. So come hang out with me on October 3rd and we could chat and talk about comics, Star Wars, toys, whatever. As for today's episode, it's been a while since I've done a Versus episode, so I figured it's time I do one. And with the Ant-Man movie being such a success and Adam returning on Arrow and then eventually being on DC Legends of Tomorrow, I couldn't think of a better time to put these two pint-sized heroes up against one another. So let's see how these two characters stack up. I'm going to kick this episode off by telling you a little bit about each hero's backstory starting with Ant-Man. I'm going to go with the Hank Pym Ant-Man as I personally think that's a better matchup. Dr. Henry Christopher Hank Pym grew up with an ordinary family in Nebraska. His family was poor which led to his father complaining why he couldn't invent something more useful. The only one who drove Hank to follow his imagination was his grandmother. He was an ordinary but brilliant young biochemist until his wife Maria was murdered on a trip to Hungary. Devastated by the loss of his wife, he suffered his first mental breakdown. After recovering, he decided to focus his scientific work on things that could help battle inhumanity and injustice. This new focus eventually led him to discover a rare group of particles that could be used to alter someone's size. Thus, the Pym particles were discovered. Originally, Hank Pym thought that his size-changing serum was too dangerous and destroyed it. Weeks later, he realized he couldn't let his greatest discovery be lost, so he remade the serums. He studied ants, their behavior, and eventually developed a cybernetic helmet to communicate with them, thus becoming Ant-Man. If you want a more in-depth explanation of every person that's been Ant-Man, check out my History of Every Ant-Man episode. But now let's see what Adam is all about. There's been several over the years, but I'm going to go with Ray Palmer since he's the most popular Adam. Ray Palmer is a physicist and professor at Pace University, specializing in matter compression as a means to fight overpopulation, famine, and other world problems. Using a massive white dwarf star matter he finds after it lands on Earth, Palmer makes a lens that enables him to shrink any object to any degree he wishes. But the compression destabilizes an object's molecular structure, causing it to explode. During a spelunking expedition, Palmer and his students, along with his girlfriend lawyer, Jean Loring, find themselves trapped in a cave. In desperation, Palmer secretly uses the lenses he carried with him to shrink himself in order to be able to climb through the small openings in the fallen rocks sealing the cave. Knowing he will likely explode, he hurries using a diamond engagement ring to cut through the rocks. Palmer eventually enlarges a hole in the rocks sufficiently and descends to the floor to try to alert the others of an escape route before dying. However, upon entering the lens's beam, he finds himself returning to normal size without the danger of exploding. As the lens is covered with cave moisture, Palmer believes that this has altered the beam that allows the strange effect. When subsequent experiments still result in objects exploding, Palmer concludes that some unknown force in his body allows him to safely size shift. He then decides to become the Atom. Now that you're all caught up with these characters' backstories, let's see what they bring to the fight. Hank Pym is a scientific genius with a PhD in biochemistry and nanotechnology, and an expert in the fields of quantum physics, robotics, cybernetics, artificial intelligence, and so on. The character discovered the subatomic Pym particles that enabled mass to be pulled or gained from an alternate dimension, thereby changing the size of himself or other beings or objects. After constant experiments with sides changing via ingested capsules and particle-filled gas, Pym is eventually able to change size at will, and mentally generate Pym particles to change the sizes of other living beings or inanimate objects. Pym retains his normal strength when ant size and uses a cybernetic helmet to communicate with ants and other insects. He can also enter other planes of existence, because his Pym particles allow him to shrink to the subatomic level, thus letting him enter the subatomic universe or the microverse. Then we have Adam. The Adam possesses the power to alter his size down to the subatomic level while retaining his natural level of strength. This is accomplished by using the remnants of a white dwarf star made into a belt buckle worn with his costume. Originally, he had to manipulate his abilities via the belt and later with hand movements before eventually syncing with his brainwaves. The Atom is one of the few heroes in the DC universe that has 100% control over his body on the molecular level, Plastic Man and The Flash being other examples, thus making him way more powerful than he's often portrayed. At 
Adam can reduce his mass to glide through the air, simulating flight, and increase his mass to punch through concrete. He has also demonstrated the ability to make his costume appear and disappear at will by shifting its atoms between this dimension and another. By shrinking to the size of a subatomic particle, he can travel through conductive landline wires at the speed of electricity, and he can travel across dimensional barriers. He was also part of the Indigo tribe, so of course this increased his powers dramatically. Now that's a very brief rundown of these characters' powers and abilities, but it's now time for me to give you my thoughts on who I think would win. I honestly think this match is a toss-up, but I'm gonna give this one to Hank Pym Ant-Man, because he's way more ruthless and mentally unstable. For example, in the regular Marvel Comics universe, Hank Pym physically abused his wife the Wasp while suffering from a mental breakdown. Then in the Ultimate Universe, the two have a physical brawl, weapons and all. Eventually Wasp springs down to escape her husband, but he finds where she's hiding and hits her with some raid insect spray. When she refuses to come out of hiding, he puts on his ant controlling helmet and sends a legion of ants to kill her. See what I'm talking about? When this guy snaps, he freaking snaps. And that's with his wife. Imagine what he would do to someone who's not his wife. So mixing that with his brilliant mind and almost identical powers, like the fact that Hank could also shrink down to the subatomic level, makes me give this one to Hank. Plus, Hank has also been Giant Man, Yellow Jacket, Goliath, and is currently merged with Ultron. So there's that. Those are just my thoughts, but I want to know what your thoughts are. So head over to our variant Facebook page to cast your vote on a poll we posted there asking who you think would win. And I'll put the results in the description of next week's episode. Back in the late 50s to early 70s, DC Comics had a weird obsession with transforming their characters. What do I mean by transforming exactly? Well, for starters, they turned Wonder Woman into a gorilla for no apparent reason besides the fact that they wanted to. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, friends. In Adventure Comics 387 in 1969, Supergirl drinks a serum that is meant to make her completely immune to kryptonite. But instead, it transforms her into a werewolf. Because, well, that just makes sense. Of course, the only way to cure this is to go to an alternate reality and find a werewolf Supergirl who is trying to do the same thing, but opposite. And then switch potions. Then you have Lois Lane turning half insect, Superman turning into a lion man, Batman turning into a toddler, Aquaman turning into a balloon, Batman turning into a genie, Superboy turning into a sphinx, and the list goes on. So why did DC have this weird obsession? Who knows, but I'm sure glad it's over. When you buy a domain name from Domain.com, you get the power to influence and control what people find when they search for you online. No domain extension will help you tell your story like a .com or .net domain name. Domain.com is affordable, reliable, and easy to use. The guys at Domain.com gave variants an awesome offer. Get 15% off Domain.com's already affordable domain names and web hosting when you use the coupon code variants at checkout. So when you think domain names, think Domain.com. First up for Wednesday, September 23rd, we have Kanan Issue 6, a tale from the time of the Rebels. No longer a Padawan, the adult Kanan finds himself on the planet Caller. Here we have We Are Robin Issue 4. Rico finds herself living a dream as she teams up with her personal favorite hero, Batgirl. Now we have Flash Issue 44. Zoom's team launches an attack that Central City will never forget. With Wally West in the line of fire, the Flash is racing against the clock to save his city and his friend. And finally, we have Grayson Issue 12. Dick Grayson returns home to Gotham City, but will Spiral ever let him go home for good? And that'll do it for today's episode of Variant, but be sure to like our Variant Facebook page to keep up with the show and all things comic related. You can also follow Variant on Twitter at Variant Comics or me on Twitter at Eris underscore Quinones. But I'll see you guys next week when I talk about all things comics. Today on Ant-Man, <laughs> today on Ant-Man. Good? I had this hair in my shirt the whole time. <laughs> Let's get into it, Tim. Let's get into the meat. Let's kick this big.